efficient portfolios. The important points from the previous lecture on risk and return that we carry into this lecture. All rational investors hold well diversified portfolios. A well diversified portfolio has diversified away unsystematic unique risk as risk consists of unsystematic market risk. Rational investors won't hold risk that can be effortlessly diversified away. So all rational investors hold well diversified portfolios. The relevant measure of the risk of a portfolio is its variance or standard deviation. For an investor holding a single security, the relevant measure of the risk of an individual security is its variance or standard deviation. For well diversified investors, the relevant measure of the risk of an individual security is its covariance with the other securities in a well diversified portfolio. To induce investors to hold risk, the market prices a risk premium into the price of a risky asset. But the market will not pay a risk premium for holding risk that need not be held. So the market pays no risk premium for holding diversifiable unsystematic risk. The market pays investors for risk that they must hold. They cannot diversify away systematic market risk. So the market prices systematic market risk, which is measured by covariance. The outline of our basic model says that the expected return on a risky asset is equal to the risk-free rate plus a risk premium. And that risk premium is for non-diversifiable systematic market risk. In this lecture, we developed a premier model used in practice to price risky investments, capital asset pricing model, also known as CAPM. A risky asset is described by two measures, expected return and variance or standard deviation. These two measures allow us to differentiate between all risky investments. They also allow us to make a rational choice between two risky investments. They're objects of choice. We prefer more to less. So we choose that risky asset with the highest expected return everything else equal. We're risk averse, so we choose that risky asset with the lowest standard deviation, everything else equal. This graph plots the expected return of standard deviation of two securities, A and B. Which security would a rational investor choose? Both securities have the same risk, but security A has a higher expected return. So a rational investor would choose A as it gives a higher expected return for the same standard deviation. Once again, we have two securities, A and B, and we have to make a choice. Both securities have the same expected return. However, security A has a lower risk. A rational investor would choose A because it has a lower standard deviation for the same expected return. We have two securities A and B. They have different expected returns and different standard deviations. If we want higher return, we can choose A, but we incur higher risk. Or if we want lower risk, we can choose B, but we would have a lower expected return. Or we can increase our options by forming a portfolio by putting some of our wealth in A and some of our wealth in B. The expected return of a portfolio is a weighted average of the expected returns of the securities making up the portfolio, where the weights are the proportion of the portfolio 
invested in the security. The standard deviation of a portfolio depends upon three things. The proportion of the portfolio invested in each security, the variances or standard deviations of the securities, and the covariances or correlations between the securities. Onto this graph we'll plot the risk and expected returns from all possible portfolios consisting of positive investments in security A and security B formed by varying the proportion invested in two securities. Suppose a correlation between A and B is a perfectly positive correlation, so its correlation coefficient is 1. When the correlation between the securities in a two asset portfolio is perfectly positive, the standard deviation of the portfolio is a simple weighted average of the standard deviations of the two securities. When both the expected return and the standard deviation of the portfolio are simple weighted averages of their component parts, they both increase linearly with changes in the portfolio weights. Consequently, the risk and return combinations of portfolios consisting of A and B fall in a straight line running from A to B. By varying the proportions invested in A and B, we can form portfolios lying on a line. The straight line indicates there's no diversification of risk, as a standard deviation of portfolio would be a simple weighted average of the standard deviations of A and B. But risky assets are never perfectly correlated. When securities in a portfolio are imperfectly correlated, the standard deviation of the portfolio is not a simple weighted average of the standard deviations of the securities in the portfolio. When the correlation coefficients are less than 1, the risk and return combinations obtained from portfolios begins bowing out to the left towards lower risk. The lower the correlation, the more pronounced is the deformation. Consider the equally weighted portfolio. The expected return is the same, but standard deviation is now lower. All the portfolios have lower risk. This is the benefit of diversification. On systematic unique risk, is diversified away. But do rational investors form portfolios for the sole purpose of diversifying on systematic risk? Well, let's form this particular portfolio by putting some of our wealth in A and some of our wealth in B. Note that this portfolio has the same risk as B but it provides a higher expected return. So if you desired your investment at that level of risk, you would not invest in Security B, but would form a portfolio to give you a better risk and return combination. The risk and return combinations provided by portfolios can be better than that obtained from investments in individual securities. So rational investors form portfolios to obtain the best risk and return combinations. And a best portfolio would be an efficient portfolio. An efficient portfolio is a portfolio that provides the highest expected return for a given amount of risk and the lowest risk for a given expected return. All rational investors hold portfolios all rational investors hold well-diversified portfolios, and all rational investors hold efficient portfolios.